What is going on, family? This is Eric Ross with another Life at the Debt podcast episode. This is episode four, and today we are going to be getting into budgeting. Um, I'm going I'm to be very direct with this episode. This episode is just going to strictly focus on budgeting, not going to talk about anything else. So let's get into it. You know, people say that they hate a budget. You know, people say a budget limits their freedom, you know. People who say, I feel like a child if I gotta give myself a budget. I'm here to tell you to get over it. You know, you cannot achieve financial independence without a budget, simple as that. Um, like, it's, it's like this, how do you know what your, fi- your expenses will be uh, if you don't have a budget? How can you calculate your financial goals, you know, if you don't write it down? How will you know the amount of money you need in investments to sustain during retirement if you don't even budget for your expenses? Like, how do you know how much money I need every month if you don't have a budget? You know, how can you live without a budget? And that's why a lot of people live in paycheck to paycheck because they don't have a budget. You know, people don't live paycheck to paycheck because they don't make enough money. People live paycheck to paycheck because they have, you know, poor spending habits and, you know, don't write things down. You need a game plan for everything in life. And... You know, a budget is just another one of those key game plans that you need to win at this so-called thing called life. So, um, it's like people finance everything, man. I, I see people finance TVs. I'm, I've done it before. You know, I went to Best Buy, you know, 0% interest for the first six months, pay it off. You know, I financed a sofa. So, I know I'm not the only one who's ever financed a TV, financed a sofa, finance the car, people finance everything, and it could all be so easy if we just put it in the budget. So, um, are you willing to submit to someone else's plan? Change can be hard, and I understand that, but trust me, you know, if you've never budgeted before, just give it a try, and, you know, let me know, let me know the, let me know the money difference that you have, or the money difference that you see when you actually, you know, account for you know the money that's coming in and going out so uh you know a budget doesn't like i said a budget doesn't limit your freedom it gives you freedom it gives you permission to spend money instead of wondering where your money went every month now you'll have you know control of your money instead of feeling like you know your money's all over the place you know people be like damn People be like, man, where did my money go? And it's simply because they just don't have a budget and they don't have a plan for those dollars. So those dollars tend to wander off. So what we're going to be getting into today is what I call a zero based budget, which means, you know, that's your income minus your expenses equals zero. So um, I'll do two fairly uh, basic budgets. One one budget will be a person in debt and then this the next budget will be a person out of debt and i'm going to show you the difference and i'm going to show you how you know debt really steals from you <clears throat> and you can actually see how debt steals from you when you write it down and have a budget and i think that's another reason why i was so disgusted with the amount of debt that i had because i could i could actually physically see how much money was going out and debt payments and all of that money I could have been saving. So, <clears throat> sorry. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say we have a young couple here. You know, fresh out of college. Uh, they make thirty thousand dollars a year each. So they both make twenty five hundred bucks a month. So we're gonna combine their income for a combined household income of five thousand dollars so at the very top you want to pitch your income now I, I want you guys to follow along here you know grab a pen grab some paper and you know we're gonna do a little mock budget with you guys so <clears throat> this budget isn't going to be perfect I'm gonna just do you know 10% of everything just so it can be simple and the numbers of will be easy to uh, follow along with so so at the income, we're going to write down $5,000 because that's what you put at the top of your budget, your income. And now, like I said, it's a zero-based budget, so it's income minus expenses equals zero. So, 
the next category category in your budget is giving. So right now I'm giving, and um, this is a person in debt. But typically, what you would like to do is give you know at least ten percent of your money. Giving will change you, change who you are as a person. It will make you a better person. Trust me. So um, but since you're in debt, um, I always say give a little until you can give a lot. So, like, when I was in debt, I wasn't giving 10% of my income, I'm going to be honest. So, uh, let's just say you get $50 a month with your, you know, $5,000 income. Uh, and that could be towards, you know, uh, homeless people. You take $50 off the bank in dollar bills. And, you know, every time you see a homeless person, just give them a dollar or give 50 bucks to, you know, someone in need. So, $50, you got... Four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars remaining. Next is the next category is saving. Now, if you're in debt, you know you want to just save a thousand dollars as quickly as possible. Then cut back on your expenses expenses as much as possible to pay off all your debts. And then you know later on we'll get into you know how debt is like I said robbing. From you because you can't save nothing because uh all your money all the extra money that you have should be going towards you know paying off debt so um saving is next like with your budget you will know how much you can afford to save but i'm gonna just leave that blank for now <coughs> so the next category is spending so uh Next, I like to put down food, and uh, with this five thousand dollar a month income, let's just say you know you spend ten to fifteen percent of a month on you know food. So I like to break it down into two categories. I like to have the restaurants category. So let's just say let's just say we split it in half, and let's just say we spend two fifty a month on restaurants and. 250 a month on groceries <laughs> for a total of $500. So now we have a total of 4,000. $450 remaining of that 5,000 a month income. And I know some people spend $1,000 a month on restaurants, making only $4,000 a month. And uh, that's because they don't have a budget. They, they go out to eat every day. They go out to eat and spend a lot of money on the weekends. And uh, they don't meal prep with the groceries. So, but hey, we all, it's all a learning process. Next is, the next category is housing. Rather it be a mortgage payment or a, uh, you know, a rental payment. And it's recommended that you do not spend more than 25% of your monthly income on a house payment or a rental payment because then you're house poor. You know, if, you're, if your house payment is 50% of your monthly income, it's like that. It's like you don't have money to do nothing else because, you know, you may, you may be in debt and you got, you know, a house payment that's 50% of your income. So, <clears throat> I say the the house payment is $1,250, which is 25% of that 5,000 a month income. So now we have, I'm sorry, I'm doing math in my head. I don't have my phone. That is 3,000. $3,200 remaining of your $5,000 a month income. Next, we have utilities, which are typically, you know, 5 to 10% of your, your your monthly income. So let's just, you know, let's just say, get my phone out of doing math in my head. So let's just say your utilities cost about, I say 300 bucks a month. So that's Wi-Fi, you know, gas and electric, stuff like that, 300 bucks a month. So now we have $2,900 remaining 
in your budget. Next category is transportation. Transportation is like oil changes, you know, gas, any other maintenance, and we'll just slap down 10% for that. Now, of course, you know, some, some months you won't need to use all 10%, um, but let's just put away 500 bucks a month for transportation because, you know, you never know when you'll need new tires. You never know when you'll need the oil change. You never know when you need maintenance. So let's just always save for these, you know, little hiccups. So let's save 500 bucks a month if you're making $5,000 a month. Um, so now we got $2,400 $2, remaining in our budget. Next is personal. I like to do this as, you know, fun, fun, uh, fun money. You know, and I like to, you know, separate it into do two different categories. So, <coughs> fun money for the wife and fun money for the husband. Let's do five to ten percent. So we'll give two fifty for the wife. Fun money, two fifty for the husband. Fun money, and that means we got nineteen hundred bucks left in our budget. Next is clothing, which is five to ten percent. I know we're gonna have some shopaholics on here listening to this, so uh, let's just go ahead and let's do five percent, man. Let's do five percent. Let's do two fifty. So we got uh, sixteen fifty remaining. So we can spend 250 of my phone clothes. Get a few t-shirts, get a nice pair of jeans. Get some shoes next month. <laughs> Entertainment, like if you wanna, you know, go to the movies, go bowling. You know, that shouldn't cost too much. Let's do 250 for that as well. Live a modest lifestyle, guys. Come on. So we got fourteen hundred remaining and then we got to do a miscellaneous do a miscellaneous uh budget category because you know that's just things that you know just may come up that you haven't budgeted for so this is like your safe money so let's put 500 bucks in there 500 bucks in the miscellaneous that's 10 percent of your your uh, monthly income so then you have 900 bucks remaining so now I did not do the saving category because this is the person who's in debt. So let's just say that they have their thousand dollars saved up for their, you know, mini emergency fund. So that nine hundred dollars that they have remaining in their budget that they could have been saving, putting towards retirements or, you know, putting towards, you know, different categories. Um, they now have to, you know, throw all that $900 away and, you know, give it to the bank. So, this is when I really got disgusted and I realized that, man, I was, I was, I was giving 3000 bucks a month away towards debt that I could have been saving or that I could have been using to, you know, bump up my food category if I wanted to eat out more or bump up my fun money category if I wanted to, you know, have more fun or my entertainment category, bump that up more. But that was $3,000 a month going straight towards that. So um, I was really disgusted and it just really, now that I seen it, it motivated me to, you know, get out of debt even quicker. So um, yeah, write this stuff down, guys. Write it down, write out your budget two to three days before you know, the next month begins. Um, some of these uh, categories in the budget, I recommend you using cash. So uh, what me and my wife do, we uh, we got this cash envelope system that we put money into every week. So we live a real modest life. Um, we save a lot of money. We, 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 we use 200 bucks a month in the cash envelope system. Um, so we got, we got, we use cash for groceries, 
We use cash for clothing. We use cash for entertainment. And uh, we use cash for miscellaneous. And we put cash away for our newborn baby in case we need to buy him anything. So that's about five categories that we use cash for. We split the $200 a weekend. And you know, every week we don't use all of the cash. So it'll just build up and build up until, you know, of course we need to make a purchase. And um, I say to use cash because when you pay with cash, you pay less because you actually feel cash. There's a emotional connection to physical dollars, you know. Versus if you just use a debit card or a credit card, you know, you buy something, you give the cashier your debit card, and then you get your debit card or credit card right back. So it, you don't feel that, you don't feel it as much, but with cash, you know, it's you're making an actual exchange. You're, you're handing over hard-earned cash money to the cashier. And in exchange, you're getting the product that you wanted. So nobody likes to, you know, feel as though they're spending a lot of money. And that's another reason why people spending habits are out of control because they just use credit cards and debit cards for everything. So yes, I recommend you, you know, using cash for some of these categories. Um, yeah, guys, that's that's a sample budget and. I really don't feel like doing the uh, the person without that budget, but you kind of get the point. I kind of told you like the extra money that's left over in your budget now has to go either towards debt or towards saving or towards other categories. You know, if depending on if you're in or out of debt. So, guys, I I just I hope you guys um you know just. Just budget, man. Just just give it a shot and let me know if this, you know, budgeting thing is pointless or, you know, if it actually works. I know it works. Um, and, you know, things things don't happen overnight. It's going to take it's, it's going to take three months for it to stick. You know, you'll make mistakes. Um, and, uh, you know, nothing I talk about on this podcast is it's going to make you rich overnight or. It's not a get rich quick scheme, you know, everything will happen gradually, but you know, all of a sudden, you know, everything that you ever wanted in life, you will you will see manifest and um it's going to, it's not even gonna seem that long, but you know, if you consistently do the th do these things and budget, um next thing you know you'll have, you know, you'll have money. You, next thing you know you'll have control, you won't be stressed out about things anymore. You know, when you have a budget and a plan and um, things pop up, it's okay because you've you've planned for it. It's 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 not an emergency. It's it's just an inconvenience, and <clears throat> your significant other will love you for it. You'll love yourself for it. Your your blood pressure will drop. Um, I'm telling you. So, oh, one one last thing I want to challenge everybody listening to this to do is to uh, always 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 be wanting to cut expenses. Um, and I challenge you to save one percent a month, and uh, by the end of the year, that's twelve percent of your money that you will have saved that you can, you know, invest into savings, invest into retirement, invest into rental properties, invest into a business you wanted to start. Just save one percent. Just save one percent of your money that you would have been spending anyway. So if if you would have been spending 200 bucks um just save one percent of that no just save one percent just say if, if that's 200 bucks a month that you could have been saving um that's that's two thousand four hundred dollars at the end of the year that's bonus money that you can um invest into whatever you would like and uh that's my challenge to all each and every one of you guys um let's get better let's continue to grow Let's continue to get great. And um, yeah, let's take control of our destiny, guys. Uh, this is Eric Ross with another episode. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, man, be blessed. Have a good one.